Okie dokie. Yet another PS5, because what is new there? So, I think this has been sent in by a customer. Uh, sorry, no, I don't, I don't think. I know it's been sent in by a customer. Uh, I think it's been sent in for no power. Yeah. Another bro broken PS5, nothing new. We, well, if, yeah. Oh, okay. We get a beep occasionally. How many times have we seen this in the past couple of months? We'll ever get the odd beep. And to think, someone said a couple of months ago, that was like, you don't need to keep smashing the button. I'm like, yes, you do. Because <laughs> that happens. Uh, we've got no light, so it's not... It's not lighting up or anything like that. Um, yeah, so no blue light, just a single beep every few, well, every minute or so. So that's telling me that the, um, the power supply is going into some sort of, well, not a protection mode. Uh, it's taking a while. Actually, no, I know what's happening. Sorry, I should... Um, I should probably I should probably say what what's actually happening. There's some sort of a short on the board, and the bench power supply. Sorry, the power supply. When it when the boot sequence starts, it's going to go up to about 150 milliamps. It's supposed to go up to 300, so it's supposed to steadily climb up to 300 milliamps, and then it's supposed to drop straight back down. And when it drops back down to four milliamps, it's ready to turn on, which is why it takes two to three seconds to actually allow you to turn it on when you plug it in. This one looks like it's getting stuck, likely at around about 150 milliamps or something like that. We can find that out with the bench power supply, but likely getting stuck at around about the 150 milliamp mark and then dropping down to zero, thinking that it's completed the boot sequence, when in reality it's not turning the RAM and the APU on, or it's not enabling the RAM and the APU power rails. So that's what appears to be happening with this. I'll find out what the boot sequence is on the bench power supply and I'll try and hook it up to the PC, PC so as you can see as well. So someone said that they unsubscribe because I, I do too much guesswork when I'm doing repairs. So let's see if we can guess our way through this repair. Shall we? So I will say as well, this will most likely make a video. I've got to justify that error it takes to take them apart somehow. So this will most likely make a video if he does make a video, I'm live streaming on YouTube at the minute. It is Friday, well it's technically Saturday morning. It's 12.16 a.m. That's how devoted, devoted I am to the cause. So if you do watch it back as a video and you're just finding the channel now, don't forget to subscribe. It might be look a little bit more popular. I would really appreciate that. And if you need any parts for PS5s or any other console, consolefix.shop link in the video description of course uh, where you can buy used parts for most consoles and uh, if you can't find it on the store just contact me and I'm sure I can help out I will sell cheap soft boards as well by the way if, if you need an individual chip that you can't buy and also if you need your PS5 repairing get in touch link in the description now that we've got the admin stuff out of the way, let's get this POS taken apart. Pop goes the weasel. I'm going to take the board out in a minute, so I'm not using the bench supply yet. I'm still using the the uh, power supply for the, uh, what do you call it? But I do have myself a PS5 breakout cable that I can use. So this has come off a, a broken PS5 power supply that I... I was going to fix, but then I sacrificed it for for the sake of making a breakout cable. So now I can just literally hook that up to the PC, uh, to the uh, the motherboard. I make breakout cables for all sorts of things. I've just made this actually um, for uh, for laptops, all in one with USB C and USB type uh, micro USB and stuff as well. I'll just connect it up to the end of there. Phil learns to repair by watching his own videos. <laughs> You know what, it was actually my mate Vince who inspired me to do this for YouTube, to be honest. Right, so, now that all of my stuff's working, I'll set that to voltage mode. Some DC volts, now that everything's work, everything works. Okay, 12 volts. Yep, seems pretty stable. 
Um, might be best for me to actually use my dominant hand. Do we get 5 volts? We do. I've got a feeling we're missing 3.3. .3. No, we're not. Okay. We're not missing 3.3 .3 volts. And we have a signature failure. F7002. Okay. Well, F7002, if we look at... This is the EDM010 board. So, if we look at um, F7002, we've got 5 volts that comes in here. And then it goes through this chip here. This um, It's a Texas Instruments chip. I can't remember the chip number off the top of my heart. But that off the top of my head, but that goes out to 3.3 volts. So we're supposed to get 3.3 volts there as well, and that's not present. Do we get 5 volts at this side of the fuse? Yes, we do. So it's blown on this side. So we've got we've got no 5 volts there, which is meant it's meant to have. So we've got um, a blown fuse. So now we know what the problem is. We can hopefully fix it. Um, it should be relatively straightforward. So it's pointless testing any more test voltages because we know what voltage rail is missing. So we've got 5 volts this side, but we haven't got 5 volts from the chip onwards. The fuse has blown, but the fuse has blown for a reason. That's probably going to be short. Like It's probably going to be short on the either the 5 volt rail after the fuse or it's going to be short on the 5 volt rail, on the 3.3 .3 volt rail after the fuse. So even though we've got 3.3 .3 here, we haven't got it, we haven't got it here. So one of the 3.3 .3 volt rails is missing. We need to find out why. So like I said, we know what the issue is now. What I can do is we can see that bit, we can see that boot sequence on the screen. So if I hook up the 12 volt cable, my custom power cable, to make sure we get we get the polarity correct. So from this side, um, positive on the uh, left hand side. And okay, we're actually at 268, 269 milliamps, and that's where it's holding. So let's just see if we get any. Let's see if we get any signs of heat when we do that. So it's holding at 268 milliamps, and what you'll find is that it's not going to power on. It's not going to attempt to power on until it drops back down. But that's supposed to heat 300 milliamps, so it's not getting fully through the boot sequence. And yeah, okay, there we go. All right. Uh, oh no, sorry, that's the sorry, that's the SSD turning on. So never mind. So the SSD is turning on. Um, that looks a lot hotter than it actually is. Um, we're we're at like twenty two degrees. But yeah, you can see the SSD turning on there. Or is the SSD turning on? Was that something else getting warm? No, it wasn't. It was the SSD. So the SSD is turning on, but then nothing else is turning on afterwards. So if we spin it round, yeah, that's where the SSD is getting warm again. So I'm looking for a heat spot to see if I can detect where the short is. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, there's not a lot showing up. Um, we did have a bit of a heat spot there, though. That hit 32 degrees Celsius. That's not too hot, but it's it's slightly abnormal, just around here somewhere. All right. Culprit will not be heating up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it depends which side of it, it the short is. Um, so if we go under the microscope, then let's we'll see if we can figure this out. So this is where the issue lays, or at least this is where the issue starts. So you can see we've got F seven double O two, and there's a fuse there. And this is basically a uh, DC to DC converter, F7002. So if we look, let's go into resistance mode. Actually, let's go to diode mode. 
dial mode faster than uh, resistance mode. So red probe on ground in dial mode. Um, if we test there, so there's no short on this side, 0 .3, 0 0.37 volts. That's normal. However, this side is. So I'm going to say it's probably one of these caps here that's shorted. It's very doubtful that it's going to be the chip. It could be, but in fact, what's that? That seems a bit strange. Uh, so it could be the chip. That is dead short to ground. It could be the chip. But I'm going to say it's more likely going to be the uh, one of the caps because the caps on these are really cheap. Let's just see if we can see anything visually if we zoom right into it. Can we see anything? Yes, we can. So we do have a visual cue here. A visual cue? A visual clue. Can anyone see what's wrong? Can anyone see anything abnormal there in that picture? Come on, chat. Someone's going to get this. Okay, time's up. You all lose. Let out board flux. Not quite. Not quite. You're close there, mate. Cloud strike, cloud strife, got it. There you go. We have a solder blob right there. You see that? And what does that normally mean? It normally means that something has got very, very hot, very, very quick. In fact, it's took the solder completely off. It's actually desoldered from the board, but it was still making a connection. Got it right too, doofus. <laughs> Where? Small 0101. No, you just, you just said small 0101 component. It's an 0201 component anyway, so you're still wrong. Ha. Oh, we still have a short. That hasn't cleared the short. Interesting. Interesting, that hasn't cleared the short. That cap was definitely bad. 100% that cap was bad. It's just pinged off somewhere. I don't know where it's gone, but... Unfortunately, it hasn't cleared the short. So now we're going to have to go with good old-fashioned voltage injection. So I'm going to set my... Bend supply to one volt. We don't want to inject five volts into this line, that's for certain. I'm going to swap my probes over from the bench supply. That was definitely bad, that cap. That that cap has definitely been taken out. Um, the reason I say that is because it was actually desoldered from the board. That didn't take much to move. Like, that shouldn't have moved like that. All right, so I've got the bench supply set at one volt. And I'm going to inject... That is a hell of a short. 3.8 amps at 1 volt. And climbing. 4.2, 4.3, 4.5. And now it's starting to current limit. Then it finally starts the current limit. Let's use the thermal camera, shall we? Where is Mr. Short? Come on, Mr. Short, you can show yourself. That probe is a bit hot, that's for certain. So we've got no current draw on the other side of the fuse, but this side of the fuse, we have. Right, I think we need to go up to 2 volts. This circuit can handle up to 5 volts, but let's increase to 2. Did that go to 2? Yes, it did. Okay, it's current limiting. Which means it's going to be very difficult to find this short, unfortunately. Unless... Because the probe's heating up. I mean, my probe's heating like 60 degrees Celsius. I'm just trying to... Pick up where the short is. I think the short's on the other side. 
I think the short's on the other side of the board. Because it's not showing up with the thermal cam. So... Let's just take the... Probes. Put them back into the... Um, meter a second. Into the multimeter. Let's just check... For a short on this side. So we've got another one of these SBV chips here. Which is directly linked to the other side. Yeah. We've got a short on this side as well. So I think the short is probably on this side here. And it's just heated up so much. That the cap on the other side is desoldered. So that was a hell of a short. Before it actually failed. Or before the fuse actually blew. Which is quite ridiculous really. Always use your visual clues. Can anyone see it this time? Naughty chip. Naughty little chip. You are a naughty boy. Trying to hide from me, huh? Mr. Chip was trying to hide from me. Now, if we use the bench supply and use the thermal camera on this side of the board bingo bingo yep so yeah kind of should have looked on this side before I did anything else, but hey ho. Doesn't the hole help with airflow? Yep, you got it. So yeah, there we go. That cheapy is definitely bad. Okay, there we go. So I removed the chip. Let's just see if the short's still there. So I can use voltage injection again just to check see if the short's gone. If it doesn't draw any current, then we know the short's gone. If it does, then we know the short's still there. And yeah, the short's gone. So all of the rest of the caps are fine. However, we also have a blown fuse, which, we could, which we're going to have to take care of on this side as well. Because otherwise, we're going to power this back on and it's still not going to work. So the reason I didn't just change the fuse is because that fuse blew for a reason. So because I'm going to have to replace a fuse as well, which is something that I don't have in stock, because I don't know the values of them, I guess I could look at the data sheet. I do have some of the chips brand new, but because I've got to take a, donor board, take a fuse from a donor board anyway, I may as well take a chip from there at the same time. I mean, I've got to replace it with... Uh, I've got to replace two caps here because of that other cap. Not that the cap is absolutely required, but if I'm going to be replacing components in the area, I may as well replace that as well. Just kill two birds with one stone. So now I just need to find a donor board. Here we go. Right. Donor board. So we've got F7002. So let's just test that so I need to switch leads again I really should get a separate set of leads for the bench power supply shouldn't I but then again I make cables for everything I inject voltage with so it's not too bad let's just test this fuse make sure it's good yep the fuse is good and um, we don't have a short on the board as well so that's fine I can use these parts happy happy days let's just move this cap out of the way Stuff it, let it ping off. Let it ping off, why not? Oi.
naughty cat. Naughty Mr. Capacita. Trying to run from me. Maybe you need hot tweezers. Nah. I've actually got some. I just don't use them. I don't like hot tweezers. I don't like the feel of them. Like, just the feel of the tool in your hand, it's just, it just don't feel natural to me. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them, I just don't use them myself. See, and this is why, this is why this flux is shizer. Like you need way too much of it just to do an effective job, it's ridiculous. Right, let's grab a donor chip off here. Let's knock my airflow down for this to 30%, that will do. Now, I'm only using this flux because it's there. But I found it in a drawer and I just wanted to use it before it went off. It came with some low melt solder that I bought. But honestly, cheap quick flux, it's damn expensive and you have to use too much of it to do a decent job. No, I'm only using it because I don't like waste, that's all. I'll stick to my freaking king bow, thank you very much. I don't like the smell of it either, it stinks. It smells like pee. Alright, there we go. And he's a beautiful job. Rapid dry technology. Patented and protected. Alright, let's go back into diode mode. Just make sure that short is gone. And that's a good reading. We haven't got a missing component there, by the way. It's just, um, I just tinned the extra pads while I was soldering the replacement fuse. Okay, there we go. Just make sure that, that the uh, circuit's good this side. Yes, it is. Okay, and do we have a good fuse? Yes, we do. Awesome. Job done, I think. Should be. Just need to sort out the liquid metal and then we're good to go. Okay. Moment of truth. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. Sick of them, but I enjoy doing them. <laughs> Sick of the same old faults over and over, though. What do you think caused that? Probably a power surge, mate. Um, some sort of a surge of some sort, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say what actually caused it, but most likely a power surge. Bravo! Next. All right, just wait for that to boot up fully, and then we're gonna switch over, and we're gonna see it light up. Cheers, Scott, thanks, mate. I do know the circuits quite well by now. Uh, I mean, I've seen too many of them, to be fair. Okay, that's booted. Awesome stuff. Boom. 
Yep, that looks like some sort of a power surge considering it didn't get turned off properly. So, there we go. Happy days. That'll get a full test tomorrow. For now, I'm just going to shut it down, put it back together, and call it good. Alright, so now I've put it back together, I'm going to make sure it powers on still. Um, you know, you never know. So I'll just make sure it powers on still, and then, uh, then we'll be good to go. Yeah, I'll just wait for this to boot up, and then I'll shut it back down, and I'll test it tomorrow. Make sure it works all fully tomorrow. I'm not really compelled to test it fully. Um, it now boots up, so we've got a white light. And uh, I've already tested display. It displays, it turns on, job done. So, yeah, nice and uh, nice and straightforward, I guess. Um, so we had a short on the 5-volt line with a blown fuse. And that turned out to be the SBV chip. Um, if you're watching this back of the video, I'll put the part number down below. Um, I think I've got them on my store, and if not, I'll list them on the store. But, yeah, it turned out to be the SBV chip that was blown on the other side of the board, which is basically a DC to DC converter. Um, so it converts 5 volts to 3.3 volts, unless, unless it's the EDM 020 board. If it's the EDM 020 board, then it's converting... 5 volts to 1.8 because they changed the circuit in the EDM 020 board uh, so they obviously knew there was an issue there somewhere but yeah nice and straightforward change the chip change the fuse replace that cap that desoldered itself job done happy happy days so if you are watching this back as a video um, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed it if you do need any parts for these um, including those chips consolefix.shop you can find them on there and uh yeah, thank you all for watching, I guess.